County Kildare featured in nine All-Ireland finals between 1903 and 1935, winning four, 1905, 1919, 1927 and 1928. In the same period, they featured in 16 Leinster Championships, winning 10 and six of those in a row from 1926 straight through to 1931. These are the glory days of Kildare football. Probably the reason that they do so well in 1919 is that they feature a couple of preparatory matches challenge matches against Loud, against the Dublin Keatings and against the rest of the county, preparing themselves for um, what becomes the Leinster and All-Ireland Championship. Initially beating Leash in Newbridge in the quarterfinals, Westmead in the semi-finals in Edenderry and beating Dublin 1-3 to 1-2 in Crow Park in the Leinster final to set up an All-Ireland semi-final against Cavan in Navan in September. Larry Stanley, in a letter to the Leinster leader on the 17th of September 1919, criticised his fellow players for not turning up to training. The selected players of Madnestown and Newbridge are upsetting the training arrangements by failing to turn up at the appointed time. One half of the week has passed and only four players have turned up, three of whom belong to the Cara team. Larry Stanley belonged to Cara. It worked and they turned up for training. Kildare meet Galway in a thrilling All-Ireland final on 28 to September 1919 in front of a record attendance of 32,000 at Crow Park. The final score, 2-5 to Galway, one point, shows the dominance in, of Kildare at that period. Olympic high jumper Larry Stanley, mild champion George McGann, featuring amongst the players on that dominant Kildare side. They became a force to be reckoned with in the 1920s. My name is Jim Clark I, and, I, and I'm a, a nephew of the famous Larry Stanley. I mean, the reason I am, my mother was a Stanley, she was a sister of Larry's. And it's the strange thing that my mother was a very good footballer. If she was around today, she'd be a star. Because they used to train at home in the, they were farmers. And they used to have ricks of hay and they'd kick the ball over the rick. And my mother on one side and look at Larry with the other. And she'd catch it and kick it back to him and he'd kick it back to her. And I myself became a county player at senior level, at junior, minor, all levels. So I brought on a little bit of tradition with me, you know. My name is Tom Stanley, uh, nephew of Larry Stanley's. And um, talking about my father telling us about Uncle Larry, would, he would never think that he played in the game, after the game, that he was that hum humble he was, you know. So um, there was a myth about him catching the ball with one hand. But in fact, he says, I never caught the ball in one hand. But he was such a good athlete that when the, when the people were, the guys were up for the ball, he would jump up and take the ball out. They were holding the ball for him almost like, and he would put his hand in and take the ball out. They all thought he was catching the ball in one hand, but it was just, he was lifting the ball out. They were holding the ball for him. <laughs> my name is Dermot McGann. Uh, my father uh, played on the 1919 Kildare team that won the All-Ireland. He ran for the guards, I think they were recruiting uh, footballers and runners and so forth and uh, he had a uh, great uh, time running and uh, a great record really. We have uh, a number of Talton medals, gold and silver and a number of cups. He won uh, a famous cup, the uh, Healy Cup. It was, uh, I think the man was, Healy was a uh, commissioner in the guards. He was from Cork and it has to win it three times to hold on to it. It's actually a replica of the uh, Hurling Cup. I suppose uh, we being a bit young, I suppose, to, to really appreciate how really good he was. Kildare featured in four All-Irelands, 1926, 27, 28, 29, back to back. In 1926, they were defeated by Kerry. They win 27 and they're the first team to raise to Sam Maguire in 1928, losing, sadly, in the 1929 All-Ireland, which would have produced three in a row. Uh, Mick Buckley, my father was also Mick Buckley. He was on the 1919 team, the 27 and 28 team. There was only two Kildare had the three medals, himself, Larry Mersham and Paul Dyle. No other brother, he, he brought one to England, his son has it. Me, Holly Connor, who's outside, he is actually the 1919 medal. And Brian Buckley is Shem's son. He has the one of the other, either the 27 or the 28. He actually was, could have been the captain in 1919, but out of his respect for Larry Stanley, he, he stood down from the captain. 
but then he was lucky enough he was captain in 27. And uh, he always talks about uh, the great battles with Kerry in 27 and the great rivalry and the great friendship. He, I think he played on John Joe Sheehy in 27 All Ireland. When Kildare played in Chile, John Joe Sheehy would pick him up at Chile Station and bring him over to his house for dinner. I, I was involved in the 1965 team, yeah. 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 And Pat played a few games as well, and we all played, Tommy played, we all played with Sarsfields. But... So the family legacy... Oh yeah, on. we're mad, we're still big time, yeah. It's... Well, my name is Michal O'Connor. Uh, I'm a grandson of Mick Buckley. The first All-Ireland of three that Grandad won was 1919, which is this medal here. Uh, my Grandad used to wear it on a watch chain. Uh, pocket watch and he had lost it and my mother found the medal when she was a child and Grandad gave the medal to Mammy when she found it. Grandad actually captained the team in 27 and uh, 20 was on the team in 28. When James Conlon passed away it would have fallen to Sarsfields to provide the guard of honour at his funeral. Unfortunately for whatever reason they were unable to Mary, his daughter, made it known that she might approach Moorfield, their bitter rivals, and lo and behold, Sarsfield did the honours. John Carey was a brother-in-law of James and Frank Joyce Conlon. He was Church of Ireland and he got fed up minding the coats and gear when the rest of the lads went to Mass after practice. So he began to tag along with them. He married their sister Bridget in 1913. Frank Joyce Conlon was their best man. Frank had actually played in the 1905 All-Ireland, scoring one point and scoring two points in the 1919 All-Ireland Final. Mary O'Brien, the daughter of James Conlon, one of the other members of the team, remembered how Larry Stanley, this great footballer, used to hang a bucket on the crossbar so that he could kick balls into it, demonstrating the precise nature of his ability and his enthusiasm for the sport. Throughout this entire period, people wanted to see Kildare and Kerry. From that first time that Kildare and Kerry met in an All-Ireland in 1903, when they had to play three times for Kerry to win a victory. The 1903 final played actually in 1905, and would you believe it, when they meet again in 1905 championship, the final that time was played in 1907. On that occasion, Kildare were victorious. Hi, I'm Paul Morn. I'd be a grandson of the late Ginger Morn that played fullback in the 1919 Kildare Alwyn team. And this is a photograph, an original photograph I have of the team, which is 100 years old now, which is amazing the condition it's in. I remember when I was a teenager talking with my grandfather and saying to him, uh, Ed, can I ask you something, a question about the 1919 All Ireland final? And he says, Yeah, go ahead, ask me anything. And he could tell me who scored, what scored, what time, and everything. It was just an amazing memory he had. I, I asked him, how come Galway only scored one point in all Ireland final and you guys scored 2-5? And he, said, he started laughing and he says, remember Paul, back in them days you used to cycle everywhere. And we used to cycle from Kildare to Crow Park. They cycled from Galway. They were banjacks when they got there. He said, so I'll never forget him telling that story, right, you know. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Bernadette Jacob and my father was Peter Grady um, from Rosebury, born in Liffeyview, Rosebury. This is a ring that was a Leinster Championship medal won by my father in 1919 and he subsequently um, made, got it made into a ring for my mother. They married in 1934. I'm wearing it now every day. When we started researching the men in the team, we were drawn to the little boy that you can see in the front row, and his name is Peter Conlon. And we decided we'd try and find out what happened to him. And as we started to research him, we found that he was born in 1916, a very important year in Irish history. And in 1919, he became the mascot. His father was Frank Joyce Conlon. We wanted to find out what had happened to Peter after 1919. Did he also go on to be a footballer like his father, as did many of the children of the team? So we started to research him. Sadly, we found that in 1941, Peter was killed at Kilmore Quay in Wexford when a mine exploded. He, along with four other soldiers, were blown up on the beach. Peter was only 24 years old when he died. 
So a very tragic end to the little boy that you can see in the front row of the picture. On the team we have Kildare men, Meath men, Wicklow man, a Dublin man and a man from County Derry. Some of the men proved difficult to research as there wasn't a lot of information known about them locally. In particular, the man from County Derry was originally thought to be from County Armagh, but with cooperation from Lavi GAA Club in County Derry, we were able to prove that Bernard Midlade was born in County Derry. So there was a great geographical spread of men on the team. Some of the men also disappeared from the scene after 1919. It was very difficult to find out what happened to them. Some of the men emigrated after 1919. James Stanley, known as Jay Riley at the time of the 1919 All-Ireland, became a priest and emigrated to America where he died. Three of the men emigrated to the United Kingdom. We successfully traced their deaths and places of death. We were able to provide that information on our commemorative poster. During our research we discovered that five of the team were members of the Republican movement and one of the officials, Jack Fitzgerald, was officer commanding of a Newbridge company during the War of Independence. He had been arrested after 1916. He had been the goalkeeper in the 1905 All-Ireland winning Kildare team. Uh, Frank Joyce Connell from Newbridge was an intelligence officer. He worked on the railways and he was uh, gathering intelligence for Michael Collins during the War of Independence. Kit Flynn from Kilcock uh, was also an Irish volunteer and he, even though he was on the run, happened to be able to turn up an odd time to play for Kilcock GFC. Tom Lawler from Halverstown uh, Nace was also an officer in the Irish Republican Army and subsequently was an officer in the National Army during the Civil War. Ginger Moran was an officer as well. He had been born in County Mead and had moved to Kilcock when he was two years of age. He later moved to Eden Derry, but he was an officer in the IRA during the War of Independence. Mick Salmon was the referee on the 21st of November 1920, which was afterwards known as Bloody Sunday because Crown Forces fired into the crowd at Crow Park, killing 14 people and wounding several dozen. Uh, one player was fatally injured and afterwards Mick Salmon, who was lucky to survive, kept the whistle that he used on that day. Frank Burke from Carberry was playing for Dublin on that day he was marking the Tipperary player Hogan who was fatally wounded. He had been in the GPO and after the death of Pierce took over St Enda's school. To raise funds for an injured Kerry player, Frank Burke lined out with Kildare to play against Kerry soon after the 1919 All-Ireland final. James Gingermorn was my father. He was full back on the 1919 All-Ireland winning team. The goalkeeper was Larry Cribben, the Hussey Cribben they used to call him. And he's told me, Father, the top scorer at the time was the Galway full forward. And they put my father in full back because he used to play full back for Kilcock, his club. The Hussey Cribbon said to him, Ginger, if he gets by you, he won't get by me, he says. That's the Leinster medal here, and that's the All Ireland winner medal, the All Ireland medal. And he won. My name is Mark Murray, and I live in Timahoe. County Kildare. I um, was an, a next door neighbour of Joe Connor, which I remember when I was a school kid. Joe was very eccentric and he always wore his medal and his watch around his waistcoat and was, you know, he, he was very, very proud of it. So when he got sick before he went into hospital, he left me the medal to look after and I still have the medal because there was no living relatives of Joe at there at that time. So I still have it and I'm very proud to have it.